Right, so here she is, my smooth operator um, with a rather nasty orange antenna because I've just swapped out the black one um, in case I had an issue with it. Um, so this video um, is really just going to be a discussion about um, the build itself and my thoughts and really a discussion on these motors and why I chose the Brother Hobby R6 2207 in the lower 2150 KV. Um, so unlike when I usually do these videos, I took this guy out for a test fly yesterday and I literally put two packs through it, uh, one 4S pack and one 5S pack. And the short answer is it flies absolutely great. Um, even just with made up um, pids and filter settings which I just lifted from my Hyperlaw CG um, it felt great in the air um, really steady, really smooth um, predictable um, everything that I kind of want in a freestyle frame um, so if we if we look at the build itself we've obviously got the um, Catalyst Machine Works Smooth Operator which as you can see is a really low profile frame Obviously it's got its built-in um, GoPro session mount and the components that I've used are, as I just said, the Brother Hobby um, R6 2207-2150KV which are um, 4 to 5S motors. I've got my usual Foxia Predator V2, um, obviously this one is a, a micro version um, and yesterday flying this in the evening um, it seemed to work pretty much as good as the mini versions which I love so much um, and while you won't get the super pretty image that you get from a Runcam Eagle I love this camera because it basically just allows me to see exactly what I need to see in any lighting conditions you don't have to faff around with it at, at all it doesn't give the prettiest image but it just shows you everything that you need to see scraggle branches etc without you worrying so for me it's the best FPV camera um, out there obviously the mini will probably be slightly um, slightly better for this but that's a, a no-brainer for me at the back we've got this disgusting orange fox ear um, pagoda antenna as I said it did have um, a black one but yesterday when I test flew it I had huge issues with the VTX I was using um, if you look at some of my previous videos, you'll know that I did a review on this guy, which is the Eosheen TX805. And I loved this little VTX, um, which was the reason why I bought it. And I loved it because of its form factor, the fact that it had an MMCX connector, which I much prefer over UFL. Um, it's got solder, solder joints instead of a silly connector. Um, it's got a heat sink, so it should run cooler than the Unify and it had smart audio and went from 25 to 800 milliwatts and when I tested it it wasn't quite as good as a as a Unify high voltage but for the intent and purpose that I tend to fly with um, it was absolutely fine and for 11 quid versus the 43 quid of the Unify I went out and bought another one um, which is this one and yesterday when I flew I had the worst video reception I've ever had ever um, I literally was struggling to fly behind any sort of obstacle, a tree or a branch without pretty much losing total video um, video image, um, which is why on the flight footage that I posted um, I'm being relatively cautious because I half the time I couldn't see where I was going. Um, so for whatever reason this is just a pile of crap, it's a faulty VTX, um, so it's a bit disappointing and I've updated my notes on uh, the little review I did of this guy accordingly um, just to let people know there's obviously a, a QC issue here um, which to be fair with Eosheen is quite often the case however when it comes to VTXs I haven't really had any any um, issues and looking at the AKK stuff this is just a rebranded AKK Mini Ultimate or whatever they call it um, so it's 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 basically an AKK board uh, rebranded as um, as the machine. But yeah, this was crap. So all I've done is uh, taken out the other one that I had and popped it in again. Um, so the build itself, as I said, we've got the motors, we've got the Pagoda antenna, we've got the Eosheen VTX. Um, the rest of it is really um, the Hobby Wing 
G2 ESC and flight controller. So if I just sort of take this apart and you can kind of see what we're doing here. It's been a bit of an unusual build for this. When I originally built it, I was just going to run my ESC wires and heat shrink them along the front. But what I decided to do instead is use race wire on the bottom. And what I've done is um, basically just conformal coated these, put two, co two coats of um, conformal coating on them to waterproof it. And I'm doing this because I've got some <coughs> CL racing um, LED race wire coming. And my plan is when that arrives is just to remove this race wire and replace it with the LED version that, uh, that CL racing have, uh, which is essentially just Excuse me, that's my batteries ready. Yeah, which is essentially just race wire with built-in LEDs. And because the, the light is, is, is now um, fading in the evenings, I thought it'd be quite nice to um, to have LEDs on the bottom. So all, all I'm really doing is just testing out how sturdy this will be. And if necessary, I'll just heat shrink over the top of it. But because of the way the arms sit, there shouldn't be a huge amount of... Um, abrasion on these because the rear arms are, are higher than the base plate and the front brace also and bottom here also protects anything from hitting these so again that's just a, a, an aside but if we take off this bottom plate one of the things I was really impressed about last night when I had my VTX issues is that given how low this stack is and how tight it is in here you would expect it would have been quite a hassle to change my VTX but all I did is simply undo these three little bolts or screws and it just basically slid straight out so as you can see at the front we've got the bottom of the Hobbywing ESC which is rated for up to 6S and at the bike we've got the Eachin VTX and all I've simply done is heat shrink <coughs> the Pagoda antenna um, and that, that basically makes it stiff enough that I didn't need to use the brace plate um, that Neil kindly sent me, which is this part. Um, because in a crash it's got enough flex that it won't break, um, but it's not flexible enough that it's going to hit my props. So all I've basically done is just sat the VTX underneath the flight controller and I, I've basically just used 3M foam tape to sandwich the two together and on this plate just to protect the VTX from hitting the, the plate itself I've just used insulation tape and again a bit of 3M foam tape and that just sort of sandwiches the two together um, and when flying this way yesterday I didn't have any oscillations or vibrations or anything at all so it's working out really well and because <clears throat> the VTX has a heat sink I'm not really worried about it overheating um, this frame was really built for a Unify, so the Unify would be a better option, but I'm hanging on until probably Black Friday or when there's some good deals around before I buy one because I'm not happy spending 43 quid on a VTX. So that's this side. If I go to the other side, and I'm just going to pause the video while I just unscrew these bolts. Excuse the noise, it appears that one of my neighbours um, is doing some building work next door. So basically what I've done is I've taken off the back plate, which is just held on by um, four bolts. The front ones which go through the, uh, the rear arms and then the two at the back. And what you can see here is the Hobbywing G2 flight controller, um, which is connected via this pin connector to the... Uh, I think it's 45 amp PSC at the front of the quad. Um, the front of the quad is more difficult to remove because you've got to take away this um, this TPU shoulder point. So I'm not going to bother doing that. It's not a big issue. It just involves a little bit more faff. Now I've been pretty impressed by the ESC. It looks pretty good quality. The flight controller I'm not sure about. Um, it's a decent enough flight controller, but the one thing I didn't notice prior to buying it is that everything to do with the FPV is via this um, pin connector um, and you have various cables which come with it um, which you can use they give you quite a few actually different sort of cables but the problem with it is if you're using um, a VTX that doesn't have a pin connector etc 
basically what you've got to do is to splice every single wire to the wires from your VTX because the flight controller doesn't have any pads to wire them directly. Um, it do also doesn't have a camera control pad and I don't think it has um, F port either or I haven't noticed one. Um, when I was flying I was getting no video noise or anything like that so it obviously works really really well. I just think if I'd have noticed this prior to purchasing it um, I probably wouldn't have bought it and I would have used you know a pyro flip F4 or, or another flight controller because the pyro board has got this lovely completely flat back which makes builds where it's really tight um, somewhat easier. The other reason why this flight controller isn't perfect for this particular frame is because it's got so many connectors and it's also got an SD card slot on the bottom it's pretty tight um, going into this particular frame um, hence the reason why the VTX is really just sat against the bottom of the board um, but I used it simply because it was new and I fancied giving it a go um, it's got the um, sort of more sensitive gyro um, which is uh, capable of up to 32k um, I'm, I flew this on 16 16k um, and as I said it flew absolutely well um, so basically the long and the short of it is the ESC I think is very good the flight controller uh, not so good unless you're using the corresponding um, hobby wing flight controller in which case you can just use this pin connector to to plug it in there's not a huge amount to say um, obviously you've got your uh, battery connector here which is just soldered onto the ESC my um, XM plus receiver is just sat with some double M double sided form tape on top of the four in one ESC and as I said my motor wires are simply connected to the ESC via this this race wire um, so the build itself is pretty standard and to be honest it was a really straightforward build without too many issues the only thing that you can't see is at the front of this quad this front section is connected via let's see if I can show you um, is connected via a bulkhead which is let's see if we can get you to see it which is here a 3d printed bulkhead and on top of that I've simply sat um, the Hellgate FPV buzzer which is a self-powered buzzer and that just sits nicely between this bulkhead and the shoulder 3d print um, and keeps itself in place with a little bit of um, a little bit of tape um, and again that buzzer will just sound should I lose a battery um, or lose the quad uh, and it's really just a bit of peace of mind and the um, capacitor I've used um, the bigger of the two which come with the Hobby Wing ESC I think this one's 35 amp um, 1000 UF um, and as I said my my uh, video was absolutely crystal clear I think the interesting thing here is when I was um, looking at this frame my initial thought was to go 6S because of course Catalyst machine works have really been the big uh, proponent for 6S recently um, with their racing stuff um, using low KV motors um, and high voltage um, to get more consistent battery life and, and less battery sag. So that was really the first thing that I looked at. The issue for me um, is I, have, I would have had no issue going to 6S but I've got so many 4S packs um, you know over 20, 24S LiPos that I didn't want to just basically say goodbye to those LiPos you know I can't afford to go out and buy 26 x or, or 10 or 26S packs in, in one go so I didn't want this quad to be limited to you know two or three packs um, so I kind of thought well I'll, I'll look at 5S um, and when I started looking at 5S I sort of became interested in two motors um, one was this guy which as I said is the bro Brother Hobby R6 the other one was the um, T-Motor F40 Pro 2 um, which is also available in a 2150 kV and the reason why I was attracted to both of these motors despite the fact that there are other motors out there that can run 5S I mean the, the Mr. Coppers I have 
of which I think these ones are 2400 kV or rated for 5S, so I could have used those. But the reason why I was interested in 2150 kV is because I'm a relatively kind of smooth pilot um, and I like the kind of the precision and long, smooth, slowish movements um, when I'm flying. And if you were a snappier pilot or you were one of those guys who loves to burn batteries and fly really fast all the time, a higher KV would be a really good option for you. But what I was looking for is a, is a KV that would allow me to run my 4S batteries um, and also my 5S batteries. And on 4S, what I was hoping for is a powerful motor that had plenty of bottom end torque, but one that also had a lot of throttle resolution throughout the the, the, the lower to mid range. Um, and on my other quads, which are using um, T motor F60s, they fly absolutely great. Um, and on fast flight, or if you're flying in a relatively open area, they're absolutely awesome motors. But when I was flying more tighter proximity um, stuff, I always felt that I was lacking throttle resolution at the bottom end. And I always felt like I was kind of holding myself back or flying within myself, flying nervously, because I could barely touch the throttle without the quad wanting to leap ahead. Um, which when you're in a proximity situation isn't, um, isn't what you want. So my idea for these guys would be, when I was running 4S, they would, as I said, they'd have plenty of torque to carry this quad, but they'd also have plenty of precision and low end throttle resolution. And when I was flying it yesterday, albeit I was in a very open area, so you can't really judge um, speed or anything so much, I really liked the way that they felt through the first 50 or 60% um, of the throttle. Obviously, as you got to the top end of the throttle, 70, 80, 90%, it didn't have the punch that you would you know, have on a T-Motor F60, 2,500 kV or thereabouts. Um, but it had plenty of power and speed for what I was looking for. When I switched it to a 5S LiPo, then suddenly these motors came alive and on the flight footage you can hear that higher speed, that higher scream. Um, and on that basis the quad suddenly becomes a lot more faster, a lot more agile, a lot more precise um, in terms of, you know, you make a stick movement and it, and it really wants to, to move with it. So I think for me, and again, this is really just on the basis of two packs. I'll have to wait and see longer term. I think for me, I found a really good setup because for everyday usage when I'm practicing and trying to do smooth footage, I've got plenty of 4X, 4S packs that I can use. And when I want to fly a little bit faster or I'm in a more open area where I can run a lot more speed, I can use the 5S packs. And because I've got this extra port which raises my FPV camera from 30 to 40 degrees I can also run a lot faster than I would have done before as well so I'm really really chuffed with how this guy's worked out for me I think the frame is an absolute peach um, it's it's rock solid it's really stiff everything is really well put together um, it works really really nicely and as I said being able to change your VTX on a build this tight with three bolts um, is just um, is just immense. I think the one thing, if I just clip this in, the one thing that I would like a little change on is the rear prop um, distance. Because if I take my packs and show you, the rear props are pretty close to your battery. So if you kind of put your battery in as you normally would, bung it in, wrap it round and kind of strap in. Let's get it centre and strap in. You'll see that the it's not strapped in properly, but you'll see that the rear props pretty close to this battery and on when it's strapped in properly there's no way this battery is moving um, so it's not an issue but it, it just means that you have to pay a little bit more attention when you're strapping in than you otherwise would do and that's my only criticism um, the guy I know Gary who also has this frame uses 5.1 
um, or should I say the T Motor 5143 and he hasn't had any prop strikes either but we're both really conscious when strapping in of battery placement um, and as I said I'm not worried about I'm not worried about hitting my battery I'm not worried about anything like that I'm not worried about cutting batteries when I crash because it just doesn't happen when you're strapped in properly it's just a tad annoying when you're strapping your battery in to have to double check to make sure that you're not too close to um, to these rear props so that is my only criticism on this frame the rest of it I absolutely love um, you know does it fly better than my Hyperlore CGs I couldn't tell you is the honest answer it flies from my brief excursion really well what I need to do now is look at setting it up because the the bass tune that I've got is really really good but when I go down to 4S packs at this KV I'm lacking a little bit of um, stick what's the word stick aggression um, compared to what I would usually be having on a more powerful setup and when I go to 5S then I get that stick um, that stick speed or stick aggression back again so all I'm going to basically do is when I'm running 4S I'll have one um, profile and I'll just I'll just increase feed forward a little bit and then on, I'll have another profile for 5S where I drop back the feed forward a bit which will mean that I have the, the quad that still feels exactly the same in the air but I retain the throttle resolution that I'm looking for so yeah so probably a bit of a boring video for most people this but this is the kind of stuff that interests me and I think this was all really a big experiment for me with these motors um, and I really think I've found something that, that really works for me um, and in terms of the motors themselves they're really sweet um, really really smooth the construction looks amazing um, and I got five of these guys for the price of four of the T-Motor F40 Pros um, so I can't really grumble I think they're um, I think they're brilliant how long they will last and the fact that they've got open bottoms which I'm not a huge fan of on freestyle quads we'll have to wait and see but yeah for the price spot on so yeah so look forward to more flights with this guy thanks very much um, to Neil at Catalyst for sending me the frame as I said I think it's probably the best looking freestyle frame I've ever seen it feels rock solid I mean this plate even without any screws in look at it how tight it is you literally have to unclip it to um, to get it out again so strength wise I've got no worries um, by the amend amendment to this um, the shoulder piece that they're doing yeah so this has now become my everyday frame alongside my beloved Hyperlo CGs Cheers guys, thanks, bye bye. doesn't hurt